Hey, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about penetrating trauma or penetrating injury. This was kind of a tough topic to put together just because I had to go through the different areas and pull out the most important parts or what I thought were the most important parts. I also used uh, review materials to help pick out what was the best parts to, to include here. So let's start with the neck. Uh, generally, you think of any wound that violates the platysma as being a penetrating neck injury. We break the neck up into three zones. Zone one starts at the sternal notch and goes up to the cricothyroid cartilage. Zone two, up from there to the angle of the mandible. And zone three, from there up to the base of the skull. So. Uh, these zones help us to think about what anatomy is in there. Also gives us some prognostic factors because zone one is associated with the highest amount of mortality. Some recommend that uh, you do mandatory uh, immediate exploratory surgery if your wound is in zone one or zone two, but most people say that that is uh, just depends on the situation. So. For diagnostic tests, you do CT with or without angiography, you can do Doppler, uh, contrast esophagraphy, uh, esophagoscopy or bronchoscopy can all be used to help uh, determine where your injuries are. Generally, it's easier to find arterial injuries than it is venous or esophageal in, uh, injuries, so you want to make sure that those are ruled out. For treatment, you want to make sure you intubate early, and uh, especially if you have hemoptysis or a strider or hoarseness or any other indication that you have uh, real penetration, then uh, get get uh, stable airway in and prepare for a surgical airway before you uh, intubate because you, uh, you may have a failed intubation and you need an immediate surgical airway. Also, with intubation, you can end up, in some cases, uh, causing an incomplete laceration to become complete, or uh, or you can uh, rupture a, um, a rupture a vessel or something. Anyway, um, be be sure to use. Uh, direct visualization when you intubate. Sorry, that was a lot of words to just say use direct uh, visualization. So indications for immediate exploratory surgery include shock and ongoing hemorrhage. And uh, for chest, we, we're going to go over uh, pneumothorax and hemothorax in a little bit more detail in our primary trauma survey, which we'll probably do next. But for for chest penetration, you want to think about these pneumothorax, hemothorax, flail chest, uh, also think about uh, hemopericardium, and a thoracotomy is going to be uh, important in, in several of those. And uh, if you're not sure about what type of a chest injury you, you have, if you're not sure you have, if you have pneumothorax or hemothorax, you may want to do an empiric chest tube. And Another reason to do this is because if you intubate before a chest tube in any of these injuries, you might lead to cardiopulmonary collapse. So chest tubes first in a lot of these cases. Uh, trauma that leads to cardiac arrest is an indication for a thoracotomy, uh, at least if the arrest, uh, arrest was in the ED or just before arrival. With chest uh, penetration, or really any of these, if you have an impaled object, then leave it in place because it, it may be uh, tamponading the, the wound, so it, it might be keeping you from losing too much blood. So leave it in place until you go to surgery. If you have a patient that is previously stable and then uh, suddenly dies, think about an air embolism. If you have a new diastolic murmur, think about aortic dissection. For abdominal uh, injury, a CT scan and FAST scan are, are helpful. FAST scan has uh, debated utility in demonstrating uh, hemoperitoneum, but it's uh, definitely still used. Diagnostic peritoneal lavage is what we used to use a lot of. 
and I guess we still do. I don't know how much it's still used, but that just means that we aspirate uh, any fluid from the peritoneum, and we also will put in a liter of fluid, let it sit for a few minutes, and then pull it out again, send it to the lab to help us figure out what kind of damage we have in inside. And uh, immediate exploratory laparotomy is indicated for anybody who's uh, unstable, for uh, peritoneal signs, for evisceration, which just means your insides are on your outside, or if you have an implement in situ, a lot of people will consider that an indication as well. So if you have uh, a knife sticking out of your belly, then you get to go to uh, exploratory laparotomy. For musculoskeletal, one of some of the big things to think about are just uh, whether or not we have nerve or arterial damage. Of course, that's uh, that's true of the others as well. But with this, we can check for uh, sensory and motor function. We can check pulses. Um, as far as as uh, decreasing infection is concerned, we want to do early wound irrigation and tissue debridement which will be more important even than the antibiotics, which of course we're going to do anyway. And make sure that we get any foreign bodies out. Tetanus prophylaxis applies to all the other areas as well. And uh, we just often think about it with uh, you know, sticking on a nail or something, stepping on a nail. But it applies to all these. So if you have had less than three doses of tetanus vaccine, and it's a clean wound or just a smaller wound, then you um, you do give the vaccine. You don't give the, the tetanus Ig. If it's a dirty or a major wound and you have less than three doses, that's the only circumstance where you give both the vaccine and the tetanus Ig. So a big or a dirty wound uh, and you've had less than three doses of vaccine that's when you give tetanus Ig. If you've had greater than three doses and it's a small, uh, clean wound, then you give the vaccine only if it's been more than 10 years or you're not sure. And if it's a dirty or a major wound, uh, you give it if you've had the vaccine greater than five years ago or if you're not sure. So in review, don't pull objects out because they might help stop bleeding. You get tetanus status for everybody, and they uh, get the appropriate prophylaxis. And you intubate early, in, uh, especially in chest and neck wounds. Uh, thanks to our human male body picture from the public domain. And if you want to get involved or help with the project, you can comment on our videos and tell us how to make them better. Or you can volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org dot org backslash volunteer.